I thought we'd start today with the grand tour of the Pub Battles Waterloo map in all its splendor before we cover it up with armies. We'll begin with closing in on the little town of Waterloo. Then we move south to the little town of Mount St. Jean, and of course, the church on the hill where Wellington made his headquarters. And then moving south, we come to La Haye Sainte. And then moving east, we come to Pepelaw and La Haye. And from there, we can move on down to Planchenois. And in fact, We'll even zoom in a little bit and get a good close look at people's backyards and such. These maps are amazingly detailed. From Planchenois, we'll move over to La Belle Alliance, where Napoleon made his headquarters. Right there. The little house on the left. And then we come over at long last to Chateau de Hougoumont, the Chateau of Fortune and Fame where the battle was so savagely fought. And here we are beginning the Waterloo Pub Battle Scenario by Command Post Games. Now this first turn it will seem like the British aren't getting drawn at all but they're on defense so there won't be a whole lot going on. They're just receiving. They'll be reacting in the later turns of course. Lobau is drawn first, the 6th Corps, and he'll be moving out to the east to greet Grouchy when he comes. And of course I'm joking with that because who he'll be greeting is the Prussians. His Lancers will move first, followed by the infantry. And now we have Durand's 1st Corps. They will drive into the center. They're going around the Chateau de Hougoumont. Although they do move forward to threaten it. Next up is Riley's second corps. Now there is enough space for him to pass between there. So I'm going to pat, I'll put them like that, but they're in contact. The battle at La Haye Sun. The very bloody, the initial French onslaught drives the British from La Haye Sun. Riley's attack on the British artillery. The assault is defeated, but at a terrible cost. And finally at Papalo. More heavy fighting. The French are driven back. And now it's not quite mid-afternoon. The first Prussians arrive. But you notice the Prussians are very stretched out. The day will almost be over before they can assemble and form any kind of threat. But they are ever on the French mind. It's like a burning fuse. Riley rallies his remaining troops and attacks Papalo one more time. And his artillery fires on the British artillery. Forcing the British to pull the artillery from the hill. Lobau hears a rumor that there's Prussians en en route and he advances to investigate. The French 4th Artillery Corps charges the area shelled heavily by a French 2nd Corps artillery. Durland's 1st Corps drives hard and they attack to the flank. And Kellerman's cuirassiers charge the British artillery behind Hugomont. His cavalry prepares to open up on the British west of Hugomont. But the British artillery, espying them setting up, open up. Not without effect. Kielmansig pulls his troops back from the cavalry assault. British face the charge in the center. As spent troops filter back, British unpack bags. And they outflank Riley's drive in the center. Mid-afternoon combat. We'll start with Riley's drive on the French right. <laughs> Riley's troops fall back. Durlan's drive in the center, stiffened by the Grenadier Guard. <laughs> the center is hotly contested and will go to whoever can reinforce the area first. 
Here's his car charge on the artillery. The Brunswickers pull the guard, the artillery to safety. And Hugomal. The British haven't actually occupied Hugomal, they're just behind it. The British hold, the French are thrown back. And now it's late afternoon, we open with Kellerman's cuirassiers. They can use the charge rule, and they do. The Brunswickers are destroyed, the cuirassiers ride off. In the center, driving towards the bags. This could be a critical break. The French must throw everything they have into the effort. First of all, his artillery fires into Hugomont. Without effect. The Lancers charge the artillery on the French left and the detachment flanks. He sends more troops in against the British behind Hugomont before they, they might in occupy it. And then he continues to drive in the British center. Lobau occupies the woods, brings his lancers back, and sets his artillery on the hill. Ryler's exhausted corps returns to the fray. Uxbridge orders the cavalry forward. Napoleon advances the guard cavalry into the center. He sends the old guard into Hugomont. The Duke of Orange pulls his men back. The Dutch cavalry heroically flanked the French attack in the center. Propocker's men fall back. Blucher and Zeton arrive. And Bulow begins bringing on his corps. And the French 4th Corps flanks the British defenders. Picton falls back while he can. Clinton turns to face. Artillery pulls back the baggage train to recover. Now late afternoon combat. Uxbridge's Hussars driving into the rear of the French cuirassiers. The cuirassiers are eliminated. That was harsh. Now the British heavy cavalry with the flank attack on the other French 3rd Corps cuirassiers. Cuirassiers fall back. They run off. And now in the center, the French find themselves outflanked. And the artillery fires first. The French fall back. And the French dragoons on the Dutch dragoons. The French dragoons made quick work of the Dutch Dragoons and rode off. It's late afternoon. It begins with Picton doing his best to throw together some sort of defense. And then Uxbridge recalls his cavalry. Bulo prepares his assault. And on the British right, Hill prepares his defense. And the third Prussian Corps arrives. It's perched with the Prussian Second Corps. Almost all of the British commands have been drawn first. And now the French attack. Durlan sends the remnants of his First Corps against the British line. He's a little too stretched out to command his entire corps. He's got his Lancers over here. But Napoleon can move over there and order the Lancers in. And now the French guard attacks, but Napoleon couldn't order the Lancers in and still be close enough to his main cavalry force. However, he can order the old guard in. The last block of 4th Corps artillery rallies. And Zeton's dragoons come out of column and charge the French attackers. Kellerman's cuirassiers support the old guard. Now Lobau maneuvers to protect the French flank. Now Riley brings forth his bags and unpacks them and rallies the remains of his, ar of his corps. And he moves his artillery west of La Hyde. And in the center, Wellington and Uxbridge rally their troops. Late afternoon combat on the French left. Durlan's lances charge, but the artillery, although flanked, gets to fire first. 
The Lancers are cut down. And here Durlan's troops, backed by the Old Guard, and the heavy cuirassiers, outflank the British Household Guard. <laughs> With severe losses, the British Household Guard falls back in good order. Charge in the center. Outflanked with the help of the Prussians. The French troops fall back. Now here we are at early evening. It looked like it might be a French sweep on the first turn. But now the British have held. Losses are equal. They've both lost three infantry blocks. The French need to destroy five more. And now the Prussians are getting in the mix. We open with the Duke of Orange being activated. That recovers the household guard. And the artillery opens on the French Old Guard. But the cannonballs just bounce off the big boots of the Old Guard. And Lobau continues to form up east of Planchenois. The British have stiffened their line. Riley's artillery fires on the Prussians. With deadly accuracy, they drive the cavalry off and the cavalry pushes back the British in front of them. He moves his infantry into Smuen, or however you pronounce that town, and the Prussian 2nd Corps. As always, the thing with the Prussians is they're just so strung out when they arrive in column. And now the old guard charges to break the center. Support on the flank. With Kellerman's Cuirassiers, and the Prussian 4th Corps continues to advance. And Zine's 1st Corps, along with Herr Blücher, begin to form up. And the 1st Corps, backed by the Grenadiers, renews the assault. Durlan has his men back up the old guard, you know, because they need that. No, he has them back up the Cuirassiers. The British left begins collapsing in on itself. Picton's men recover. This unpacked bags was risky, but it's really making a difference. And the French 4th Corps Cavalry charge the Prussian Dragoons. They're becoming a bit too troublesome. And now we've got late afternoon combat. Curiouseurs charging the British. The British are run down. Now we'll see the Dragoon on Dragoon action, French and Prussian. The French Elan pushes them back, but there's nothing left of those French Dragoons. And now Durlan's drive in the center. His men, of course, are backed up and stiffened with grenadiers from the guard. The artillery and artillery fires first. The artillery is lost. Now the old guard in the center. The old guard takes a couple hits and the... Clinton's men charge forward. The old guard are eliminated. Now when I play, I have a special old guard rule. The old guard were practically the terminators, the supermen of their period. Every round, they ignore one hit. But if they are ever forced to retreat or eliminate, as they were in this case, the French lose. At this point, the French ranks are growing thin. The French have failed at Waterloo. Again. Good game.